the epistle for this Sunday is taken from that of St. Paul's letter to the Colossians, and the, the epistle and gospel are taken from the fifth Sunday after the Epiphany. St. Paul's letter to the Colossians. Brethren, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, a heart of mercy, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. Bear with one another and forgive one another. Even as the Lord has forgiven you, so do, do so, so also do you forgive. But above all these things have charity, which is the bond of perfection. And may the peace of Christ reign in your hearts, unto that peace indeed you were called in one body. Show yourselves thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you abundantly. In all wisdom, teach and admonish one another by psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing in your hearts to God by his grace. Whatever you do in word and or in work, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please stand for the gospel. Taken from that of St. Matthew. At that time, Jesus spoke this parable to the crowds. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men were asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. And when the blade sprang up and brought forth fruit, then the weeds appeared as well. And the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed in thy field? How then does it have weeds? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. And the servants said to him, Wilt thou have us go and gather them up? No, he said, lest in gathering the weeds thou root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will say to the reapers, Gather up first the weeds, and bind them in bundles to burn, but the wheat gather into my barn. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Please be seated. Just a reminder in the announcements of the bulletin, the custom of putting the list of the four souls on the altar. So if you have any deceased that you particularly wish to pray for, you can put out, write out your list and give it to Mr. Johnny Guerin to put on the altar. Also, as is in the bulletin, as is the schedule this week, uh, there will be adult catechism after mass. The topic is heresy. Yes, you get to hear me preach heresy. <laughs> the subject of not heresy. <laughs> How then does it have weeds? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. This gospel has several, several lessons, several points that we could consider very, very pertinent, very practical, very necessary for us. The first one where our Lord explicitly mentions while men were asleep. How many times we have heard our Lord say, watch and pray? Well, here is the result if we do not. If we let the guard down, the enemy comes and does his sowing of seed. Now, this translation that I read just says weeds, but in the Latin, the zizania, is a, it is a more specific kind of weed. I've seen other translations where it refers to it as cockle, which I believe is an English word, sort of just generally meaning weeds, but I think it 
is more specifically the strangling type of bushy, thorny weeds. Not certain, but just an interesting thought. But this idea that the servants present, wilt thou have us go and gather them up? What is the result there? The surprising answer from the householder, no. Let these weeds grow. More importantly, let them grow even though they may choke out the other plants, the, the wheat. Even though it is a weed that does take over a bit. So let's lessen in patience. Let it rest until the harvest. So to speak of patience, we can use the definition of the virtue that enables man to endure present evils so that he be not unduly sorrowful. To endure without becoming sorrowful. or angry, we could also say, but that is the idea, this patience does not become upset unnecessarily in spite of the evil. To look a little more deeply at you know, what this involves, the, the parable is quite clearly our Lord is pointing out the good versus the bad, whether it's good ideas, but more good people, bad people. If we live in the world, if we keep company with the world, the cares, concerns, interests, and attachments of the world will choke out the same interests, cares, attachments to the things of God. This we see in another parable, where we see the sower sowing the seed across the countryside, and our Lord describes where it lands. That which landed among the thorns, among the weeds, gets choked, gets strangled, grows up for a bit, but it gets choked out by the cares. And our Lord explains, that's the cares of the world, the affairs of the world. This is the risk of these weeds. They can choke. They can strangle. But if we try to root them all out, we risk rooting out the good wheat as well. And for us, if we try to expunge all the bad people from our lives, we risk, by a lack of charity, of rooting out the good example, rooting out those that could be helped tearing out from the soul of some of our companions that seed of grace that would grow into good fruit. That's one point in which the parable limps, does not fit well. It is that in nature, once a seed exists, it is of one kind of plant. That is all that that plant will ever be. Whereas in us, we can have conversions of heart. We can be growing up a sinner and convert and become a good fruit, produce that wheat. <coughs> it's a balance for us, though. We cannot risk our eternal salvation for anyone. We cannot say, oh, I need to stay with these bad companions just to give them the chance. 
when it puts our own soul at risk. We, our first duty is to ourself. Our charity, our care for the well-being of the other, depends on our care for ourself. Love thy neighbor. How? As thyself. We have to love ourself first. Not too much, not excessively, but we do have to want the true good for ourselves. We have to want to get to heaven. I think it's been said many times before, but I repeat it. Virtue is like a, a ridge, a mountain ridge or a knife's edge. On either side, there is mistake. You do too much, you're a mistake on the one side. You do too little, you're a mistake on the other side. We'll say error, or else we can say fault. It's not, not where we should be. In the case of patience, the excess, too much, too much action, we deal abruptly, say, without patience, strictly speaking. We are too eager, and we risk throwing out the good wheat. If we have too much patience, say a defect of action, to be timid, to fail to do what needs to be done, I'm just being patient. There's a, a limit to where is patience and where is action is necessary. To be too slow, too, too unable to act, reluctant to act, when it does involve the care of our own soul. That can be a problem. We fail to keep the necessary care, fail to keep a distance when we ought to. We risk assimilating the sinful attitude of our neighbors. So in, in practical application, it's important for us to say, I cannot live fully involved in the world. I cannot be just like any one of my other neighbors. I cannot try to grow up among thorns. I risk allowing my, my spiritual life to be strangled. We cannot simply accept that. cannot also, on the other hand, become overzealous. Nobody, no friends anywhere, just in case they give me a bad example. That doesn't help either. Certain examples, certain friends, we do need to purge. They are not good for us. We are not able to give them any help. They are resistant to any, any influence that we may have. They are the influence on us, not the other way around. Maybe they will convert, but they will not convert by us being weak in dealing with them. They will convert, be more eager to, more encouraged to convert by us taking our faith seriously. So some we do need to back away from. To judge carefully, is this one really helpful to me? Can I be of benefit to this one without endangering my soul? So many times I'm going to say, well, I could help, but they keep ref refusing my help. Well, then we can't. We're making efforts, but 
we are not helping. We're simply trying to struggle ourselves through the weeds, through the thorns. We want to choose our friends, our companions, our environments wisely. Keeping a, a distance from that which is dangerous, but not being overly harsh in keeping that distance. To not pull out those potential weak. Of course, can go to Our Lady for help in this. Again, it's the, the oft-repeated idea. How does a child choose their friends? Firstly, through the guidance of their mother, who maybe introduces them to the little other four-year-olds around the neighborhood. But we go to Our Lady as a mother to help us to choose, to discern who are the good companions and who are the dangers. Which ones are the weeds that we must be patient with, that we must allow to remain for a time, and which ones we must be diligent in removing because of the danger to our own soul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.